All right, guys, today let's talk about marriage just for a few minutes. Uh, I do believe that before a couple embarks on the journey of marital conquest, that it's, it's, uh, it's good to get wise counsel, right? I mean, most of you would probably agree with that because uh, despite what their parents have, have exemplified or perhaps told them about marriage, um, uh, two people in love, uh, they always think they're different, don't they? They always think they're different. They, they can't imagine happening to them what happens to everybody else because, well, they just feel differently, right? But uh, we, we all know that's not how things play out. Inevitably, impediments, obstacles, and delays will always reveal themselves. And so it's good to know what you're headed for. And it's, it's always good to hear it from somebody that has no personal stake in your life. Now, before I get into this, because I'm going to give you some really good advice that somebody else used to dispense. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, I want to make sure that you know that you ought to be checking out the description down below and all my videos, okay? Because there you're going to find some really nice stuff. And uh, please like this video. It helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that. Share this, share this with somebody, whether you do on social media or in a text message or an e in an email. Um, I think that... Uh, there's great benefit to it to somebody somewhere. In fact, I know there is. Okay, so listen to this very carefully. Many years ago, I mean many, many years ago, there's a rector at uh, what was called the Little Church Around the Corner, otherwise known as the Church of Transfiguration up in New York. <clears throat> and when young couples would come to him for counsel, uh, he did not like to give long-winded advice. He would always give people this nine-word um, sentence that if you hear it, I think that whether you're a seasoned veteran or just starting out, you're going to benefit from it. Here, here's what he would say. He would say, now don't be both mad at the same time. Now don't be both mad at the same time. Now when I read that, I thought long and hard about that. You know, because... The simpler something sounds, the easier it is, is to dismiss it. But it's per perhaps the time when we need to perk up our ears even more, you know, because sometimes it's the it's the uh, the terse phrases, the uh, the 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 lack of volume and weight in words that actually pack the biggest punch. And so as I as I milled over this in my in my head, I thought. How how does that really how does that really relate to me? Because I can tell you it has everything to do with um, with problems in my own marriage. You know, you're all you know people who say that they don't get mad at each other. I've heard couples throughout the years say we don't argue, we don't argue, we don't get mad at each other. They're lying, and they're lying. I don't care what your personality is. I don't care what your natural disposition is. Uh, you're going to have problems. You're going to have disagreements. You're going to have very uh, hard feelings about the other person at times. Okay, and even if you try to play it off as though you're not upset, it can. It's still going to be detected in the way you look, the way you say things. Even if you're trying to be very calm. So I want to speak to that. I want to speak to that right now. And um, what I want to tell you is that when I thought about this. I had to really hold myself accountable and ask myself, if I had not been mad at the same time as my spouse, or if my spouse had not been mad at the same time as me, what difference would they have made? A lot. A lot. It's too easy to be very reactive. And when you respond in accordance with what they are putting out, what they are emitting, um, then you have become part of the problem. You no longer think clearly. You only think of giving them a taste of their own medicine, right? And this just makes things worse. So I, and I, and when you picture, when you picture how this is played out, like if you didn't get mad at the same time as, as your spouse, how that actually looks, what that actually looks like. To me, uh, it's a, it's a picture of calmness. And tolerance, allowing the other person to say what they need to say, to feel how they want to feel, and not reacting. Now, 
Now, when when I say this, when I say don't get both when don't both get mad at the same time, someone might be thinking to themselves, "Well, I'll say what I want to say. I'll do it calmly." But understand something. Be very careful how you choose your words because anger is easily detected under the surface. And it won't make any difference whether you said it calmly or not. Okay? Trust me, I know. I've, I'm guilty of this. So is my wife. And so is every other couple. So think about this. Don't be mad. I mean, literally, don't be mad. But you have to be very intentional about this. You have to decide ahead of time. that The next time my spouse gets mad, whether it's about me or about somebody else, I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to just not not appear mad. I'm not going to be mad. Okay? You have control over that. And uh, we, we have to admit that the problems in our marriages go both ways. I mean, we're both responsible, right? And a lot of it comes down to our reactionary natures. And if we can just get that under control by simply not being mad at the same time and not saying things that... Um, that uh, are meant to convey um, <laughs> how we really feel, even though we're calm on the surface. If we can just if we can just delay all that, I think it'll make a big difference. I can I can personally test to that. Like if when I've been mad, when I've been mad, I I I, I can say that. If my, my my wife has gotten mad right back at me, it did not help things, and she could say the same thing. She's probably better better about this than I am. Okay, and I will be the first to tell you, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this. This is when I read this, it was very convicting and something I need to work on. But if it meant something to me, I figured it means something to you. So, all right, take that into consideration. Let's work on this together, all right? Let's think about this and figure out if we can actually pull this off, because I know you can. I know I can. I, I work on these things all the time, so I'm not, I'm not anxious for the next opportunity to present itself, uh, but I am planning. I am planning that the next time uh, she gets upset with me, or about something else, it could be anything else, that I'm not going to feel the same way. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to allow it to happen, and uh, if I need to say something, I'm going to do it without anger, regardless of how it looks. All right, guys, I hope that's helped. If you want to know what I have in my beard today, today it was, I've been using Ardeus Man in the past couple days, actually. Uh, I started off the morning in the shower with their body wash. And I don't normally talk about something like this, but a lot, of, a lot of beard product companies don't provide body wash. But Ardeus Man actually does, and I love this. This is citrus cedar body wash. It uh, says it's natural, natural cleansers, ultra hydrating, thick, rich lather. This smells amazing. It's like an, a, well, it is citrus cedar. It's got that orange spicy type of a, a scent to it that uh, I love uh, immensely. It's really great. You should try this out. And then uh, I applied uh, our, the uh, IPA, IPA beard wash. And their beard wash is great also. And then their IPA beard conditioner and then when I got out I put IPA beard oil in and I have not applied beard balm this morning at all I'm not going to apply beard balm I just put the oil in I really like Artius Man's beard oil most of their beard oils are a little bit thicker than some of the other companies that are out there but I like that uh, it, it's, it's just to me it's a little more potent but uh, their IPA beard oil is one of my favorites I, off and on, I get addicted to different uh, scents. And for, for a long time, man, I was stuck on IPA because I, it's just great. So if you want it for yourself, if you want to take up, uh, take me up on my offer, the code is GREG20, and that will save you 20% if you go to ardiosman.com. Check the link below, follow it, click on it, and use that code and you get 20% off. That's quite a savings, actually. And that's all the time. That's all the time. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found the information I've given in it. Uh, useful to you, and I know it's. Uh, I know it can be impactful because it's relevant. All right, let me know what your thoughts are. Make your comments down below. I do appreciate you listening. I'll catch you in the next one. Be wise.